welcome to our discussion on Page Composer, featuring an overview of Page Composer and Fluid approvals. These are two new features delivered through Enterprise Components and available to all PeopleSoft applications. Today we'll discuss what is Page Composer. We'll also go into an overview of the Fluid Approval component, including a demo. Then we'll update Page Composer layouts to show how those changes are reflected within the Fluid Approval component immediately. And then we'll cover Page Composer registration, including new records, and the customization or the addition of a new button or and or link. What is Page Composer? Page Composer is built on Fluid and leverages many key people tools features, including drag and drop, style sheet control, application data sets. It is multi-instance capable through Integration Broker and Interaction Hub or Interaction Hub. Interaction Hub is not completely required. We allow you to modify compositions as uh, extensions to what we deliver. The application data set will allow you to take those changes from us whenever you choose. Because it is also built within people tools, we also we get to leverage the richness of components, pages, menu, and security. There are four main roles with or four main actions within Page Composer and three roles assigned to those actions. The first is to develop the component and or pages, excuse me, and pages that will be used by Page Composer. I should say to display Page Composer data, PeopleSoft developer will be required to take that action. And once they've defined all of those components and pages, they'll need to register with Page Composer that component. Page Composer will then read through the, the component pages to see which sections are definable. And then they would def the developer would register additional records that are displayed. The designer is going to compose the different layouts for form factors and and or actions. Uh, in the case of fluid approvals, it will be based on the approval process. And they'll use the drag and drop functionality to place the fields to in the locations on the different sections that they, they choose to. And then finally, we have the user who's going to get the experience of having these defined layouts based on different transactions. Here is the where Page Composer sits within the normal flow of page processing. So the developer, or excuse me, the end user will hit the fluid approvals tile. It will trigger the loading of the component buffer. And as part of loading the component buffer, we go through, do all the pre and post build processing for the pages. So any special application logic will be called, and then also the Page Composer runtime will be called. And at that point, that's where we'll go retrieve all of the layout, layout information and put that into presentation form for the end user to see. Lastly, we have the application data sets that we'll deliver. And these application data sets will allow you to control the updates from PeopleSoft by accepting or rejecting changes that we deliver through POM. So the, in addition, the application data sets can also be used to migrate your page composer layout data between your test and production environments. And in order to better provide a better experience, we've enhanced the data migration workbench and provided two customized views for compares. One is a column layout, and the second is an HTML format layout. Here's a quick snapshot of the column layout. You'll see at the in the source and target, we have column one on both sides. And this way you can see all of the fields that have been added between the two, and you can easily accept or reject if something doesn't fit within your, within your needs. And then the second view is an HTML view, which is really uh, detailed as far as the, the HTML5 that we are using. Next, we have our fluid approval overview. In this overview, and the rest of the steps going forward, we actually toggle between uh, App Designer, the PowerPoint, and then PIA. And so let's go forward. So fluid, the fluid approval component is built in such a way that 
it is a common location for all approvals. And if you are leveraging uh, multiple instances, we will use Interaction Broker and Interaction Hub to consolidate from multiple sources all approvals that are pending for you into a single snapshot. The fluid approval component itself is built with three pages. There's a summary page that has two definable sections uh, within Page Composer, a header detail, which has five definable sections and one line overview section. And then the line detail page has an additional five details for the line and then one subline overview section. And we did this so that we could provide a consistent look and feel for each layout between all transactions. Here's a snapshot of what the layout might look like in FSCM. So you can see these highlighted EOPC OBJ objects. These are the registered field names within Page Composer. As you register, Page Composer will look for these names and define those as sections for you. Um, you can see here that the, this requisition has is using five sections for the header, and what's not highlighted is the one line section, which is down here. Here's a similar view for FSCM, or excuse me, for HCM. In this case, they only have three sections defined, and there is no line approval, so we don't display that information. Now, moving over to a live demo, I already have the component loaded, about to expire, it's been a while. So you can see the approval tile has a count of 11. I'll click on the approval tile. So I highlight here a few sections. Great tool. So as I said, there are two definable sections. Here's one. And FSCM does not use it, but there's another row under this column two that is definable. The other pieces are pulled out of AWE and displayed uh, for consistency for all users. Again, I've got a dollar amount that's pulled dynamically, so it's pulled for each one. The information about the date routed. We're not going into all of the details of the, the approval transactions. We're really focused on um, what the capabilities of Page Composer are. Okay, so looking at my requisition, and we will come in and can see First off, that you know that not all sections are populated. But again, reviewing, here is a reserved section. This is reserved. And then the line details are reserved. Everything else on this page is pre-built by the fluid approval component. So the, the status of the, the transaction, the grid for actually storing the lines is is common, the approver comments and the approver chain, as well as all of the buttons. And then once I select one of the lines, I can go in and retrieve the additional details. And here, without highlighting this, the box at the top or this gray area at the top is in reserved within Page Composer. And then these line details are as well. So going back, one other thing to highlight is that the approval chain is now a modal dialog, and this looks very similar to earlier versions that we've delivered. Moving on, we'll take a look at updating our page composer layout. And most of this will be done through a demo and just want to point out how easy it is to update different layouts because you just need to use page composer and the drag and drop functionality and not go into uh, app designer to do any customizations on the page. So here we'll flip over to a demo. And first I want to go into our approval component. So we will take a look at our requisition again. So we made a quick change already. So the, the priority was red. I changed it to black, and now we'll walk through how to change it back to red and add an additional row of data. So inside of Page Composer, so it has its own tile. 
I'll select the definition, in this case for approvals. I will select my requisition. And the definition within Page Composer is typically the component. So you can see fluid approval component. And then the composition just means that there, it's tied to AWD where each approval process ID has its own composition. Next, you'll see as Page Composer registered this component, there are three pages, as I described earlier. You have the approval summary, the header detail, and the line detail. We focus on the header detail, but the other pages work the same. And next, inside of our toolbox, we have a list of all of the records. Not all of these records are available for every single section, but uh, you will get a warning if you choose a record that's not available for a particular area. The other option here is the ability to change the form factor. PeopleSoft delivers two form factors, extra large and small. Small would be for your phone, extra large would be for the desktop. If you choose to, you can have large and medium form factors defined as well. And this would be for your tablet, either horizontal or, or vertical. So when we look at the change I made to priority, I changed it from red to, to black. And that is done through this pencil icon. This will bring up the style sheet designer or the styles designer. And so I can come in here, I can change the, the label. And it's going to pick up this label ID. In this case, I want to change the field. I want to change it from black back to red. So I'm going to hit change that and say done and save. And we'll go show this quickly, going back to my approval component, click on the requisition, and you can see the text is now red. Going back one more time to Page Composer, I realize there's actually a field that I wish to display. So we will search for that for a requisition, hold it back up. And one thing I didn't touch on is that it realizing with that extra field, I want to change the number of columns. So these boxes here represent the number of columns displayed, and you can go from one column up to seven columns. The, the recommendation is going to be between one and three columns, and then on the small form factor, really one column of data is what you want to focus on. So I'm going to move to three. I'm going back into my toolbox. My header info view three is what I want to choose from. I'm going to grab my requisition name. And if you see that orange line, you want to make sure that that's in place. And that's part of the drag and drop within people tools. So I can drag that. I can now edit. And I can choose to display what name I want it to be. So let's see, let's just pick name. And I'll take the long name. So it says rec name. And so if this requisition has a name, that field will be populated. And let's go ahead and add one more field. I actually want to have currency code just available to me. I'm not going to display the total since we already knew that above. And if I don't choose to display a label, I don't have to. But again, this help you to see what I've got. So this one, I just want the short. And it's always beneficial to save periodically. And last but not least, let's go ahead and drag the status. So with this one, what we want to do, let me just mix things up just a little bit. And we're going to join the two fields together. Not do anything special. We just care about, don't care about the extra label. Not going to display it, but we do care about showing the long name. So we'll save all of this we'll go back to our fluid approval component. We'll open our requisition. And you can see that the requisition name is called Bikeathon. The currency is US dollars. And the status is pending approval. So just as simple as that, I was able to add three fields, format them, and put them on the page. But the next time the approver comes in to look, they will see this update and it will be invisible, you know, there's no extra caching or anything else that needed to happen. Move on to the page composer registration. Highlight here that 
registration. Typically, you'll be adding new records. Those records would contain either views for data to display or work records that would be for additional content like buttons, tap outs, and links. Key thing to note about records and views that you'll use is that you need all of the approval transaction records uh, for group approvals. So in the case of absence management, it's going to be the employee ID, the simple record, and the absence sequence number. For requisition is business unit requisition ID. And when you go down to the line level, it also includes the rec line field. One other thing to do to keep in mind is to keep it simple. You'll want to avoid uh, complex joins and large views. If you have a view with 500 fields on it, it's going to eventually become a performance problem. So you want to keep things tight. It's better to have you know, three or four smaller views than one large view. So moving on, give a demo of how this will all work. I have already created the view that we'll use. So it's this view called rec email. And it's a very straightforward view. I want to include the email ID in my display. So what I've done is I've just joined the requisition header with the user email. And this way I can pull out the primary email for the user. So with that information set, we want to go into the page composer, page composer homepage, uh, the registration. So it's the same search dialog. So we have a single transaction, which is fluid approvals. Select that and we'll select our requisition. One thing you'll notice is that they, there's a lot of information on the registration page. Um, a lot of this, again, this is why we deliver a sample data or a system data so that you don't have to worry about all the extra additions and registering all this data. But we'll look here, the form factor and the columns are a little bit misaligned primarily because of closing the one dialog. Form factor maps over here, you can see we have large or small and extra large. Um, you know, here are the two rows for our requisition summary. So this is the sub page of the component that, that, that we'll be using. Then we have our summary, more information, the other four or three sections I said were definable, three, four, and five, and then we have our line. And then it just extends down to the line summary and, and other pages. So then here are the different key reserved fields, as we saw in the, that one snapshot of FSCM, EOPC OBJ. Uh, L0, that's a level zero HTML object, and that goes down A, A through D. So we have a total of five. The labels, this is something you leave alone. The source records, and this is where we're about to modify. And then just being able to view them all. So jumping into what we want to modify, so we want to modify two things. We're going to look at the section for header detail three, because this is where we want to display our email address. So we are going to change the label. Email details is what we're going to call it. And we'll want to change it in both places for both the small and extra large so that it reflects properly. And let's do the same thing. As always, we'll save. And now we want to go into our source records and we will update and add a new source record. So these message set numbers are to change the label at runtime uh, and some other information. And then these are the keys that are associated with this record. So we will add our record. So it's LSMA score email record email. And we're going to call it email. And we'll just use the same message set number just because um, because that's all we need to do. Uh, the keys again are business unit. 
that's sequence number one. And then the second key is rec ID, and that's sequence number two. So we will now say done, hit save, and come down to our extra large form factor, and we will do the same to add a new row. And I'm just going to go through this quickly. Call it email. Let's go and save that. Save. We'll go into Page Composer. The layout. We'll search for a requisition again. I didn't need to do that. That system source is something that's specific to each pillar. So FDM is for financials. Uh, USA is for ELM and, and some of the others. So leave that alone. Uh, again, requisition is what we want. This is what we want first is go into our page for header detail. First, you'll note the layout now says email details. So now we'll go into our toolbox and our records. So you can see we have the email ID field. So we'll scroll down and we'll add a second column. So we'll leave it as one column. So we will drop our requester. Yeah, it's better actually to have two columns. And then we'll drop in our email ID. Let's then save. Let's change this. We want to include the label. And again, you can choose anything you want. We want the requester with the short name. And with the email ID, we just want to use again the short name. And I should have a good to do this. I'll go in and do that real quick. Okay. Save. Go back to our domain tile. Again, our count is still at 11. We'll load our requisition. And you can see it was created by CROT with an email address. If we chose to, and as you see here, Calvin Roth, we've expanded this from just the user ID, the requester's actual ID into their, their long description. And so we could have done the same thing here. All right. All right, and we'll move into our last section here of updating page composer registration with the use of buttons and or links. We focus primarily on buttons, but links are, are pretty much the same thing. We'll talk about it briefly. So you're going to do the same thing that you've done with registering a new view or record. You'll create the record. In this case, it's going to be a work record but we'll also create the people code associated with that button action and or link if it's going to the page transfer or whatever. And then we'll move into the page composer registration and register our button and that should have been used. So just as I had the view created, I also have a people code package created for fluid approvals. It's very simple as soon as it opens. So created a class, we extend the EOPC runtime, the button action, and then we are going to invoke the method called display button. You could do do action, but in the case of fluid approvals, we are passing in an application record, so it will fail at some time if you don't pass in that record. So we've created our own method, in this case it's called display button. I had already coded for do action to display a message box, so I'm just in turn calling a message box, excuse me, a message box. So that's all we're doing. Uh, just as a quick view, you can look at what is done for the edit link inside of requisition as soon as this opens. So the there's a link 
and it'll show that link as we talk through things. It's called edit requisition. So it's going to essentially do a quick, do you want to modify? If you do, you're going to lose any changes. And then it's going to do a page transfer. And that's what's inside of this, this method here. Moving over, back over to Page Composer, and over to our registration. And in this case, we only want the button to be available on our large form factor. So what we're going to do is select the requisition. We will scroll down to, uh, in this case, we're going to put it in the side of the summary. So here's the extra large summary. So let's link over to that and our source record. So I already have a record that exists with a, a button uh, with my work record. So you can see here's the hyperlink with parameters and that's where we're going to edit our requisition. I'm going to add one more row here and show you everything. So these, again, just as we've registered this sections that can be modified, we also register buttons and we have five buttons, five links, and five top outs. So we're going to use a button. The sequence number would be one. And this is my class. And it was called display button. Let's just confirm that, that I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, it's under the class my button. So it's gonna be my button and then display button. My button, colon display button. Once that's done, we can choose a label for it up here. I'm going to choose a label that I, a message catalog that I know exists. And this is going to be part of the AWE message set and the message number is number four and it's going to just be the word path so we're going to use that uh, makes it pretty clear so we'll say done move back up oh, we have to save changes let's save these changes move into your page composer search for our requisition and so we can update the layout and into our toolbox and this was in link two or in link one for the more information work field so what we're going to do now is we don't care about these so this is the garbage can so we will throw all three of these away let's see now with our extra column here that's not empty, we are going to drag our button. Make sure again that dotted line is, is available. We'll click save, we'll go back to our field approval, click on the requisition. This button is now available. And I'll click on it and there is my message box. Very simple. Here's an example of a link. I can click on this link and because I haven't made any modifications to this page, it will automatically direct me to the requisition. And, you know, it's all very straightforward. You can have these buttons perform actions and display other messages. They can uh, trigger any additional processing. So in the case of an absence, it's checking a vacation balance. Uh, in the case of a requisition, it's, you can have it do the budget control. and. And now here we are able to see our edit, editable requisition. If I'm here to make changes, I'm editing the requisition directly. It'll go back through the approval process and it may no longer be pending for me. So when I click pending approvals, that may, you know, this page may not be relevant. So I go all the way back to, oops, back to pending approvals and you know, it's still be able to approve or, or go back home. And my count can be uh, shrink just based on what the approvals would be. We've gone through a lot. So just a quick summary. We walk through what is Page Composer. You know, as far as the layout, 
how easy it is to configure how the individual pieces work within a component. We have an overview of fluid approvals, which is uh, was the focus of this demo. You know, it is a solution that is completely configurable. You can add rows or add records, remove records if they don't fit your needs. Uh, it's not treated as a customization, similar to what we do with you know approval framework for AWE. You know, we deliver uh, what we want you to use out of the box, but we allow you to extend. In the case of Page Composer, you add new update your layouts, you add new records, you add new registrations. You know, it's not tied to anything that we're directly delivering. And then we will also support any of the changes that you make through application data sets. So we will deliver the R, the changes we propose through ADS. You will use the data migration workbench to really decide which changes you want to take and which ones you want to leave as your own. And you know, look forward to Page Composer being used in more transactions in the future. Coming up in a future session, we'll also walk through the custom approval transaction. Uh, we'll walk through the registering from start to finish. We'll go through, you know, we'll have the records and the people code predefined, but it's really just, you know, how do I register my custom transaction with Page Composer? So again, thank you for your time, and I hope you found this useful. Thank you.